Buenasera and good evening everyone and welcome to the Quidditch World Cup Final here in beautiful, still very sunny Florence, Italy. I'm Matt Dwyer. And I'm Bex McLaughlin. And today we will be covering the United States versus Belgium. Now Bex, had I told you a week ago, all right, here's the finals. It's the United States and it's Belgium. How seriously would you have taken me? Not incredibly seriously. I would have always thought Belgium, uh, Belgium is a good team, obviously. Uh, yeah, they'd be pushing into the top 10, top five. To see them in the final, yeah, it's really exciting. Um, yeah, it's nice to see some new teams right up there in the top on the national scale, and it's really exciting. What do you think, Matt? I think it's very interesting. As someone who's a little bit outside of the European Quidditch bubble, who only kind of tangentially reads results and things, seeing all the teams this weekend, seeing the different play styles, seeing how everything has progressed, has been very, very interesting. Uh, I've got to watch Belgium a few times over the past few days. I was pretty impressed with what they were doing, and I still, I'm not sure if, even if you told me yesterday Belgium's going to the final, I'm not sure I would have believed it. Um, obviously, most people's answer would that they would see that the United States and Australia would have gone to the final. Uh, for other people might say the UK, perhaps France, uh, but to see Belgium here is quite interesting. If we look at the results, um, last World Cup 2016 in Frankfurt, Germany, they finished seventh. Respectable finish, uh, but still well outside the podium. And then at the European Games last year, they finished fourth. That's an even better showing on the international stage. And now here they are one year later in the World Cup final. The thing is, if we think about it logically, it does make a lot of sense. A lot of these players have been playing together since the inception of the sport in Belgium back in 2013, when they were 15 years old. So you've got the added benefit of they've been growing up together and learning Quidditch skills, not just adapting previous sports to Quidditch, but learning these skills directly for Quidditch. And now, well, they're adults now, so they're getting stronger and stronger every year. Um, and of course, the Dodos, uh, just came second at the European Quidditch Cup. Last year they won the European Quidditch Cup. That's the best, that's Antwerp Quidditch Club. Uh, obviously the best team in Belgium. So if you think about it logically, it does make a lot of sense. They're finally um, reaching their full potential. That's really great to hear. On the other side of the pitch, the United States. Two years ago, the United States made it to the World Cup Finals only to have an in-range game with Australia that they lost. It was the first time that the United States had lost on the international stage in the finals game, and after two consecutive gold medals, they took home a silver. Uh, speaking as an American, uh, there was outrage. There was absolute outcry oh, about yeah. the Oh yeah, I saw thing. the Facebook groups. I saw the Facebook messages. There was, there was a quite a nasty backlash against the people who'd selected the team and about the players themselves, which, I thought it was extremely harsh. So I know those players last year gave everything. To say the American phrase, they left it on the field, they did. They left everything in that game. Absolutely, they did. And I think while we say those things, it really discredits Australia, who had put together a very good squad. And I think, as we saw again this year, they had once again put together a very good squad. But the United States got to meet them twice this time. Not once, but twice. First in pool play, in group stage, and then again in the bracket, and both times the United States came out on top. So that does that is where Belgium does have the edge. I know the United States has been training, well, they've been training as individual club players, you know, for years, uh, but they had their training camp for the week preceding the tournament. These Belgians have been playing together and playing against each other probably every other weekend for the last three or four years. So they know each other intimately, whereas some of the Americans, yeah, they'll have met at USQ Nationals, They'll have passed, you know, played each other once in, once every six months or something. But Belgium is such a small country and is so well connected that these players will know each other intimately. That is definitely an advantage to the Belgian side, possibly more cohesion, uh, definitely knowing each other for a longer amount of time. It was funny, I was talking to an American tourist who had happened upon the tournament and he was uh, marveling at Quidditch and, and the entire spectacle. And he said, and he asked me, well, what's better, to have better strategy or more athleticism in this? Really, you can't have one without the other, right? Although each team has varying degrees of each for each type of thing. 
and here are the Americans. Even if Belgium has the better strategy, I think the Americans might have them outclassed in athleticism. I think the Americans have shown how strong they are through the tournament. It's been obviously extremely hot conditions, and they have wondered, they've just like blasted through game after game, never once looking tired. I know some of the other, some of the other athletes on other teams yeah, looking, feeling that wear and tear from the from the conditions, from like lots of games, uh, and the Americans just haven't showed that at all. There's been absolutely zero let up for them, and yeah, that will give them the edge. They're a very deep squad, 21 deep, really 25 deep, and many more waiting in the wings, hoping to make the team this year. How do you feel about Belgium in that regard? Do you think the squad is a full 21 deep? Do you think that they can swap out players with little to no loss in quality? There are definitely some star players on Belgium uh, that do sort of shine above the rest. One, you can't talk about Belgium, you can't talk about Antwerp Quidditch Club without talking about Louis Lemaitre. You just can't. King uh, Louis. King Louis, indeed. Uh, so he founded Antwerp, and he's been in charge of coaching the, the Belgian Griffins, the Belgian Quidditch team, oh, intermittently for the last few years. And he is an elite level player across all four positions. You don't see that very often. He comes from a basketball background. He's he's very slight, but he can take people down. He can make the hits, and his beats are incredible. So I think you talk about Louis, talk about Belgium, and then after that you've got uh, Nathan Wilput and Sepe Dewitt. Um, they're very strong players as well. Sepe and Louis, fantastic, work so well together. They don't communicate. They just know where the other has to be and what they're going to do. Wow. That drum is really loud, eh, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I do think, well, yeah, of course, uh, the U.S. has players like Harry Greenhouse, who are, who are veterans of Team USA at this point, and Jackson Johnson with this incredible plea to play all weekend. I don't think, I'm not entirely convinced that, yeah, Belgium will have that, that deep roster to the same extent that the U.S. does. And that may be the, uh, the difference here. Uh, if... if uh, the, the United States can't at, can out-athlete them, can't out-strategize them. They might be able to just outlast them. Well, exactly. I know that uh, a lot of those Belgians will be so hungry for this. Well, it's about, yeah, maybe it's just who's hungrier. Is it the Redeem team with that hashtag that's been going around for this whole time? You know, I might be biased, but I think the United States is a little hungrier. But the thing is, a lot of those Belgians, they... They took second. They came off the win for the EQC, defending champions, going in, taking second. Now, I'm not a particularly gifted player myself. I'd be like, second in Europe? Whoa. And they're like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. So maybe it's just who's, uh, who's got the heart and soul to make it happen, the Griffins or USA, USA, USA. That was a good chant. Good job. Good Thank job. Thank you. Thank you. We don't have as many songs as the UK does or the Aussies do, but we try our best. Yeah. There's a large contingent of Belgium fans behind us chanting Everybody very loudly. Everybody in Europe is going to be back in Belgium. All of these fans behind us, I don't know how many hundreds of people are here, they're cheering for Belgium because, I'm sorry, the, the, the US are the villains of the peace. We like to see, they had that redeem team thing going on. It just, they put people back up. They want to see, they want to see Belgium take it. They're our players. We saw them, like I said, when they were, I first played, um, yeah, Louis and Nathan and that, well, not Nathan, Sepper, when I was, I was in Barcelona at this like completely murk tournament. They were 15. Like I said, they were 15-year-old boys just coming down to play with this enthusiasm for the game. And no, here they are now. And I wouldn't have believed it. In that first match we played them, it was really, really hard to defend. And we realized they were playing with four chasers and nobody had noticed. They've come a long way since then. <laughs> four chasers. Like, why is there always someone free? Wait, one, two, three, four. Oh, man. Uh, certainly we have. Uh, the teams going ahead, doing their chants, getting themselves onto the line. Consistently strong starts for both teams, I think, throughout the yeah. weekend. Uh, save for maybe the first United States-Australia game, though they pulled it through in the end. Uh, today for the USA, very strong starts. The Belgians today, very strong starts. Uh, so Louis, number 33, he's starting his beater today. Sepe in uh, number 16. And then uh, Sylvain Hocek is the keeper. Sylvain, Sylvain is very interesting because he played on Team Norway when he first got into the sport, uh, I think as an Erasmus student in Norway. 
and then he went back to his native France and he made Team France that next year. And then the next year he moved to Belgium and he's been on the Belgian team ever since. So whatever jersey, whatever national team he's playing for, he's, uh, he's someone to watch out for as well. Absolutely, and it looks like the USA starting lineup is Casey Irwin, Sam Hamowitz, Lindsey Morella, Simona Renz, Martin Bermudez, and Jackson Johnson. Jackson Johnson, the most American name in the game. <laughs> and today, probably the best beater in the game. I, I cannot I wait. I'm excited I to see I cannot Louis wait. The Jackson. King Louis Jackson Johnson matchup. I want to see how they compare. I've been impressed with Louis' play all day long. He's He's been a huge boon to Belgium, both on offense and defense. I really can't wait to see what he does here. I'm really excited, Matt. Me too. The, the air is electric. Everyone's excited. Everyone's eyes are trained on this field. And here we go, ready to start soon. The IQA Quidditch World Cup 2018 gold medal game between the United States and Belgium. Sorry, I was so excited I did a little jump there. <laughs> oh, and I see Team Turkey players walking by. Uh, they've got their beers already. They deserve them after that third place game, which was absolutely incredible. Yeah, if oh, you're just tuning into you. the stream, uh, the United Kingdom and Turkey played for uh, the third place position, and Turkey came out on top after leading most of the game. It was pretty back and forth, but Turkey just had the edge. A beat of play, a beat of play. Yeah. Oh, we are getting ready to start. Belgium with a so big exciting. roar. The USA. That's it. That is Lindsay Morella keeping for the start. It's a ready. And we're off. off. Racing to the quaffle. Simona Renz. He gets there first. Running around the outside. Beating the a keeper. Tackled by, by. And a missed goal. That was a great defensive stand by Belgium. Yeah, Sylvain had a, a Renz completely down there. No messing about. And. Simona Renz, arguably one of the best point chasers in the game. That was a fantastic hit by Belgium. Wow, it is. <laughs> King Louis and, uh, and Jackson Johnson miss beats. And Belgium putting it on the far side. Back to center. Seppi DeWitt, DeWitt with the quaffle. Louis making a hit. Oh, Jackson Johnson's amazing dodge there. That was Martin Bermudez with the dodge. Jackson Johnson now applying pressure oh, though sorry. with Bermudez. There's a beat, Bermudez dives on the ball. DeWitt gets beat. And now more pressure from Johnson as Belgium is, is pushed way back oh. into their keeper zone be behind the hoop line. Looks like that was a pass after beat. There has been a few of those, actually. It's been very, very questionable. Of course, it's very hard to make those snap second decisions. Uh, being beat doesn't mean pass the ball. That's not what it means at all. It means <laughs> drop the ball, not pass it off. They're trying their best. Simona Renz looking on the drive here. He's probing. Oh, did and that look like Sylvain knocked it into his hoops? It was hard to tell. That was that was unfortunate for Belgium. Couldn't quite tell there, but it was a good goal from Simone Renz. USA drawing first blood, 10-0. Took a minute for a team to score. DeWitt now bringing it up the field, and it's a double beat, and uh, and Havlin and Zoo coming in now for America in the beater game. Of course, Havlin and Zoo have that amazing chemistry playing from Boston together for, for years. And applying incredible pressure, Havlin and Zoo Bermudez picks up the quaffle. Oh my gosh, someone get that guy some new angles. And it's a goal from Martin Bermudez. The keeper's got to feel pretty silly after that one. At what least he kept his cut. broom. That's something to keep he your broom. He kept his broom. <laughs> Hoshere just, oh. Martin Bermudez made him look silly there. I just. My biggest expectation for this game, I just hope it's, I hope Belgium get some points on the board. I'll make them settle into their game. They, they're smart players, they know what to do. Louis, number 33. Oh, making a great, I would have thought that was beat, but. Havlin and Louis going at it, Havlin comes out on top. The US putting a little pressure on and uh, Belgium looking to reset themselves. That's Morgat. And uh, it looks like the quaffle came out there and Irwin got it, gave it up to Bermudez. Bermudez driving through the center. Oh, and a great backhand goal by Arends. A good feed from Bermudez, good run on the outside by Arends. That was and maximum style points. Maximum <laughs> that was some great points style points one. right there. We tally that, right? You get, you get fantasy points for that? Uh, in my mind, yeah. <laughs> so Sylvain's called for a timeout. Uh, each team is allowed one timeout. 
And it looks like we'll uh, see a replay here in a second of that last goal. I want to see that again. So he runs in. Pass from Casey Irwin, Bermudez. He's driving in the center here, looking on the outside. Aren sneaking behind. Oh. Great athletic yeah, play by Aren. Lovely, lovely. And that was all without putting his feet back on the floor. Uh, yeah, really might, good tactic. He might have actually been flying there. Yeah, I think he was, uh, which is a really good tactic because it means you can't get tackled when you're in the air. So stay in the air as long as you can. Yeah. They can't get you. Yeah. So now Belgium has called a very early timeout. I think this is the earliest I've seen a team call timeout all weekend. If you're Belgium in the huddle now, what are you talking about? Talking about how we get another, <laughs> how we get points on the board. <laughs> okay, but what specifically? Uh, I think it'd be about opening up the U.S. defense because they're playing quite. I feel like they're quite, playing quite tight. Uh, everyone's been quite scrappy. It's really calming it down, playing their game, not trying to meet the U.S. Just playing their own Belgian game. What do you think, Matt? What would they be chatting about? I think they've got to find a better way to penetrate on the offense. Uh, certainly, I, I think I've noticed that uh, that that uh, Louis here, Lermit, uh, he. He's been throwing from a bit of distance. He's not getting in quite as close. He's giving Havlin a lot of time to dodge or block. And see, even there, he's, he's throwing from a good six to eight yards away, giving Havlin a lot of time. Oh. And the USA losing bludger control there just for a sec and, and regaining it. The, the, the beater play was blown up by, by Louis there and his uh, partner, uh, Rene. That's Renier. Elizabeth, well Elizabeth known in Renier. the Belgian team. Uh, but unfortunately, the far pass over wasn't really working. Jake Archibald with a laser shot there, couldn't quite connect. Havlin looked like he was wanting Archibald to drive a little bit. He came up on offense, probably just for a little pressure. I do think that's one of the differences between the US and Belgium. I think the US have got some incredible women on their squad. They look at Casey Owen, taking point, not even worrying about it. She's so athletic. She's so strong. Um, all the women on this team are, seriously. Now, and United Zoo not States. not giving anything. She's taking it all the way up. Putting some pressure, forcing DeWeet to just bomb it down the field to try and get rid of it. So he didn't really have any passing options as Zoo and Havland well, they closed were in on up, him. Yeah. Now Archibald walking it upfield, looking center. Those clean passes, it's just beautiful to watch, honestly. Nick Marino now with the ball, moving center, Archibald moving left. Marino across the top, over to Irwin, passes it back to Marino. Oh. He gets bobbled, still ends up with the ball, and he gets swarmed and beat. He didn't quite have the ball in his hands when he got popped there, but you know what, I'm gonna call that good defense on Belgium. That was amazing defense. That was amazing, amazing defense. Absolutely yeah. just going for it. Hopefully that will give him a bit of a, bit of a push now, be like, yeah, we can do this, we can take on the US. Zoo coming straight up, holding <laughs> no prisoners, taking, step, taking it right back. Um, Sam Hamowitz now in for the U.S. And a little pressure applied. I think at, at this point, with no reset rule, when they apply the pressure like that and nothing happens. Oh, Louis got the ball, got his bludger. He caught that bludger. That was amazing bludger play. The Belgium has regained control. There are no bludgers oh, on the floor. Great block at the hoops by Nick Marino. Belgium really should have capitalized on that one. And they were attempting to drive it back in. Didn't quite work. That was a great effort there. I think that might have been Amex. a mistake on Louis' part. He made a really, really long beat there off the field um, when Sue already had a bludger. So that was a bit unfortunate. He kind of threw away the control there. Uh, of course, communication between Peter Perez is, is m more important probably than any other combination on pitch. And Soraya, Soraya number clinch. five from Belgium, not taking any mischief there. Jake Archibald's floater shot, not good as Havlin tried to disrupt the defense. Didn't quite work. And Zhu maintaining bludger control as uh, Louis has it on the other side of the field. DeWitt bringing it up in center. He's got Hoshide. Hoshide looking round. USA keeping a pretty good perimeter. 
Oh, and a great steal by Belstrom, the beater. Oh my gosh, Avignato, great bludger steal there. Havlin able to get it back. And that'll be a sub for Zoo and Havlin as Archibald has the quaffle and brings it back up. And now here we see Bailey Fields and Jackson, and Jackson Johnson. Johnson coming in. And this Texas is the matchup I want to see. Jackson Johnson, King Louie. Johnson's fresh. Marino shot knocked down by DeWeet. DeWeet's on a run. Big crash across the field. And Belgium is on the board. The stadium has erupted. It is so loud, I can't hear Matt, and he is literally a meter away from me. It is so loud. <laughs> Amazing, De safe, De safe hands by that chaser. Running down the field. He's found her on the other side. Now Johnson trying to be a disruptor on the offense. And it uh, looks like the USA has maintained budget control. Axtell on the drive, and the score is good. A little tap from Sam Ham. Sam Ham. Sam Ham, what's Sam Ham? Sam Ham. I prefer A Ham. Big fan of uh, Hamilton myself. And it looks like bad throw from Johnson there, and Belgium will get budget control back. DeWeet now wielding the ball. Axtell on the defense. Way over to Wilput. So with Brodja control right now, that's Massin of Belgium and Louis, Louis, Louis Lemet. Well, that looked like a back tackle on uh, number 34, Lindsay Morella. And before the, even the card is being shown, she trots off to the box. I think she knows. Illegal contact, contact from behind. And that'll be a one minute power play for the Belgians. Meaning she's in the box for one minute? until uh, Belgium scores. Nice and little replay is, here. Yeah. They're going around, he's running with the ball. Meanwhile, in the real time, Ertz in the back. He passes across to find <laughs> Wilput. Wilput running in, a good finish, and Belgium has scored again. 40-20 in favor of the United States. This just got interesting, Matt. And Belgium finding a little bit of momentum here. I think it's easy to get intimidated by the thought of you playing the United States. I think that's a bit unsettling to begin with. Trudeau uh, and a keeper now. And now they've realized they're just as good. Trudeau of Bosnian Bear Sharks, probably my favorite team in USQ. They're so <laughs> cute, that logo. Jackson Johnson trying to regain control from LeMay and uh, oh, she's not on the list, unfortunately. Go back up top to Axel. Axel looking to the drive. He's been beat. And it's DeWitt. Fields hunting him down. Trudeau on the tackle. Axel hits him, makes him sky it. It's Wilput. And Trudeau slides in, misses the grab, and Wilput comes up with it. Trudeau getting a lot of booze for that play. Wilput on the drive. Wilput passing it off. 40 30. To Eric. And this is with Belgium facing the conditions. They've uh, lost the coin toss, and they're playing into the setting sun, which, of course, is very difficult. See those long shadows? Hands over their face. Wow. Whatever happened in that huddle has certainly done something. Good, certainly. good huddling. Good huddling, certainly. Belgium. And so, USA probably not finding the Fields-Johnson combo to do very well for them. They switched back to Zoo and Havlin. Seemed to be a little more effective early in the game. Trudeau up with the ball. Axel. There, and that's Luke Langlinay in the back there. Trudeau looking, passing up Langlinay. He shoots and he scores. Good shot from Langlinay, assisted by Trudeau. And it is now 50-30. Belgium just kind of passing it around now. And it looks like Louis has subbed out in favor of uh, Ekiavort, Ekiavort, a great block off Havlin, and he's main, uh, regained bludger control. A few fresh legs there, probably helping out. Devuit, 
Guarded by Axel. Axel's trying. Ekivort gets him off. Dewitz coming around the outside. Axel tackling. Oh, that was uh, Langlene, my bad. The drive in. Dumped off to Bonnet. And Bonnet scores. That's that teamwork we're talking about, that, sy that, that synergy, that chemistry. And he was not being taken down. He had two American chasers on him, and he was not being taken down. That was a lot of protection there by Eichjavort. Trudeau bringing it up slow up the field. He's got Langlene, Axel, Pavlin, and Zhu really trying to get Bludger control back, and it's uh, it's certainly not working. There was a late beat call there, but they both maintain their bludgers. Not quite sure what that was about. I'm sorry, did Eichevort just catch that with his ankles? I don't understand how that's even possible. Meanwhile, the USA pressured a little bit. What? The US doesn't even have a bludger right now. Uh, Zoo has Zoo's one in just center picked of the field. One up. Yeah. He was running around loose in the field. Looks like the US is a little discombobulated at the moment. All right, Zoo finally gets the beat, but then Havland gets beat. Trudeau wants to drive in. Tyler Trudeau pushing the boundaries of how slow you can play to the limit there. They're uh, really, really I think being I've seen clinical. Some slower play earlier. I think the UK had a good four minute stretch where they didn't do anything. But you're right. Trudeau just kind of looking around as chance of let's go Belgium come up. Trudeau floats it, and Trudeau's got the goal. Good cross hoop goal by Trudeau, and it's Will put on the run. Nathan He's got no one the in the way. Trudeau's coming oh, up. An and easy Will counter put. by Nathan Will put. Good mid range shot by Will put. I think Trudeau was going to turn him into a pile of bones if he got any closer. Nathan absolutely loving it. Wave into the crowd. They are loving this. A lot more supporters for Belgium. Bigger European crowd here. We're all rallying behind Belgium. The US have called their, called their timeout now. 13 minutes of game time have, a, have elapsed. It is impossible to hear anything outside of the amount of cheering that is going on. This crowd is deafening. It looks like we'll get a replay here in a moment of just that last goal. So here we are. Will put, he's taking it coast to coast. Trudeau's stepping up, but Will put pulls up with the shot just outside the keeper zone for the mid-range goal. That was a that was a long range. That was that was very impressive. This now what's crowd happening in these huddles now? What right is the now? U.S. saying? The U.S. is trying to figure out what strategy was working for them earlier that was not working for them now. I think the Belgian beaters have them back on their heels a little bit. They're finding it hard to regain budget control. I think if I'm Michael Parada right now in that coach's huddle, I'm saying exactly how we need to get budget control back and exactly how we're going to ram it down Belgium's throat. And if you're Belgium, you're saying, hey, let's keep doing what we're let's doing. Let's keep doing let's it. Let's go in it. Let's do I, it. I don't know if Belgium expected to be in this position or not, but I bet you they're feeling pretty confident right now. No, they believed in it. They believed in themselves probably more, more than anyone else. Good, as you should, as Nathan's you should. Nathan's psyching himself up, slapping himself on the chest. Yeah, I'm ready. Woo! Now we've got some line change going on for the United States. They've pulled in some new players. We've got Casey Irwin, Julia Vare. And that's a Cole Travis, Jackson Johnson duo, Simona Renz at keeper. So the U.S. obviously going for two male beater line to see if they can muscle out uh, bludger control. And uh, they trade out Martin Bermudez for Rachel Heald on the far side there. Simona Renz driving in, mid-range shot, and it's good. That came out of nowhere. And that's Will put, and he, he wisely uh, pulls up as uh, as Travis and Johnson have regained bludgeon control. It's hard to tell them apart. They both got long hair and beards. I'm such a fan of Rachel Hild. I'm. Me too, honestly. Oh, oh that was a great catch by Eichevort. 
but Cole Travis helps him out there. Uh, that, was a, that was a mistaken play by Travis. He runs back in and he's got the catch. And Travis, through some hustle, maintains a lot of blood number control. Number four, clearly passed. Uh, number four, Suzanne Feischer, new, a rookie this year, playing in the World Cup final. Good for uh, her. Passed straight off to, Na to Nathan without, that's gonna be a card, straight pass. Pass right as she was after beat. I think that's just a turnover. She'll be headed back to hoops. Probably a warning from our head referee here. And the ball goes back to Simone. Simone driving down. There's no bludgers. And Simone with the mid-range shot. And I think USA is starting to find a little bit of rhythm again. Eichevord kind of having his hands full right now with both Travis and Johnson. And a long range beat from across the field creating the turnover. Casey Irwin picks it up with Martin Bermudez now. That was a very long range beat from Johnson, but he got the job done and that created the turnover. Bermudez dodging the tackle there. He's directing the offense now, what he wants him to do. The problem is with the chant, Team Belgium, Team Belgium, sounds just like USA, USA, when enough people are chanting it. It's the same cadence. <laughs> Bermudez looking for his opening. You've got Louis camped on the hoops there with Belgium's single bludger. Julia Bear is wide open behind the hoops. Bermudez uh, allowing himself to get wrapped up there and uh, passing it off to Arenz. And they're just ignoring Julia. I don't know what's going to happen there. Pick by Casey Arrow and Arenz. Cross body, and uh, everyone on the sideline, on the USA sideline, signaling it's a goal. Uh, well, talking their to the goal referee. Don't count. I know, I understand <laughs> that, but they they probably had a better uh, better view than we did. We're a bit in line with the Belgian we are goals right now. Absolutely in line with the hoops. I couldn't tell you. Uh, and oh. they confirmed that it was a no goal. We've got a replay here. You see Arens drive, and on there we really could not tell. Yeah. It was it's hard not to that tell easy there. to tell in the slow mo. Uh, they throw this ball so hard, so fast. And it looks like Belgium has switched into a two male beater set. It's King Louis and Eichevort. And they'll go against uh, Travis and, and Johnson. And Eichevort, he's, he's showing some hustle. USA maintaining budget control. Dewitt in the center, guarded by Irwin. Irwin gets beat. Bermudez slides. Dewitt waiting for his options, waiting for the beaters to blow it up. Now Dewitt making his move. Irwin grabbing on to Bear. Oh, and Belgium scores. My focus was on that amazing bit of bludger play. Of course, then it was just man on man chasing. Simone and Runs getting taken down by Sylvain and, uh, and Sepe, a double whammy. I would hate to be on the end of a Sylvain and uh, Sepe whammy. Yeah, Hosh today, good job uh, with the stop there. And really, the United States, I'm not sure what happened on that play. They just left Fisher completely unmarked. As soon as they step up to guard DeWitt, uh, he passes off to Fisher and she scores. 80 60 in so now favor. Gone for two trolls. Uh, Team USA, two trolls. We've got Rachel Heald and Julia Bear, Julia Bear at the back. Of course, Simone number four, Renz. Suzanne Fisher, is not sure who to mark. Oh! King Louis. Oh! He blocks the pass with the bludger. Absolutely. And it's a stoppage of play. Absolutely phenomenal play. Stopping that quaffle with the bludger. That was good, disrupting the pass. Julia Bear was open, hopefully looking for a score there. I don't think anyone saw that coming, though. Then you could predict that Louis would take the quaffle right out of the air. <laughs> I think that was a... And the referee's discussing now uh, who, ex who exactly is supposed to get the quaffle. Now, Louis did block it out of bounds. This is a, this is a, dr a downside to Quidditch. The rule book is 250 pages. Sometimes uh, decisions aren't that easy. So troll through those rules and decide the best course of action. The referee now talking to DeWitt. And it looks like because Louis blocked it out of the back, that'll go back to the United States. It's Casey Irwin the crowd at the is top of the actually key. actually booing. I've never the, seen this before at a Quidditch tournament. They are booing the decision. They are booing the decision, but I think it's the right decision because 
Louis knocked it out of bounds. Something being right and people agreeing with it. Irwin all different things, though. To Aaron's, to Heald, to goal. And, and now they're actively booing the United States scoring, so that's yeah. where the crowd's at right now. I'm not enjoying that side of it, Matt, honestly. Like, nobody wants to, don't need cheer, but don't uh, boo. I think they're just unfamiliar with the rules. We're just at about 18 minutes of game time. The Seeker's getting ready to go. We have Alex Greenhalge as our snitch. And the, uh, the Belgian chaser beat immediately Harry Greenhouse, or uh, Seeker, sorry, that's my bad. And uh, Havlin trying to give uh, Greenhouse some time with the snitch. Meanwhile, DeWitt's on the other side of the field. He's trying to score, he goes across, and DeWitt scores, keeping it within, or uh, DeWitt, I'm sorry. He passes it to his other chaser who scores. Oh, oh but Harry Greenhouse has a snitch sock in his hand. And now we'll referee conference there. That was, well, quite an array of things happening right there. I think whatever the result right now, European Quidditch is properly, properly on the map right now. Uh, we've got four European teams in the top, in the top four, and the three European teams in the top four. That's never happened before. And Belgium is giving them quite a match. Here we've got the replay here. Harry's coming in. He comes around with the right hand. That looks pretty clean to me. And that catch is good! The United States back on top with the gold medal in the 2018 Quidditch World Cup here in Florence, Italy. Redeem Team 2018 has realized itself. I am so proud of Team Belgium though. They could not have done more. They gave an absolutely outstanding performance there. That was well done to Belgium. five times the performance I could have expected any team to give in the finals, much less Belgium. I give them all the credit in the world. They really had the United States on the ropes there. Fantastic play, of course, by the United States. We expected nothing less. Oh, the crowd chanting, let's go Belgium, let's go. Meanwhile, as the Americans celebrating, the Belgians all hugging each other. I think they should hold their heads high after this, personally. Absolutely. This was an incredible showing. I cannot wait to see where Team Belgium goes from here. I think, <laughs> and now the crowd is chanting, thank you, Belgium. They're clearly the, the home team favorites here. And now Belgium applauding the crowd. The UK expression is, they played out of their minds. And they absolutely did. Absolutely. I think the Belgian beating went step for step with the American beating. And it was simply, it was simply a few hustle play goals from America that separated this from a totally tied game. Absolutely. So final score, 120 star to 70. That's one of those matches that could have gone either way. I'd like, to see a, I'd like to see a series of that one, actually. I don't want to wait another two years for that one. <laughs> I kind of do, too. Who do you think would win in a series? My money's on the U.S. But My money's on Belgium. Uh, I'm European. My money's on Belgium. I guess we'll have to wait and see. There's our replay again of Greenhouse coming in. Greenhouse looking quite upset with himself on that catch. The players shaking hands now. This has been... This has been an incredible tournament. This has been an incredible tournament, truly. I've seen a lot of great Quidditch play this weekend. I've seen a lot of teams stepping up. Absolutely. Um, a lot of teams have ste stepped up. It's really exciting. And new teams, we have Vietnam, we have Malaysia. These new teams that just come here and showed what they were worth. It was amazing. Well, thank you very much, Matt. Thank you, Bex. And it looks like uh, we might be bringing it over to the booth to Siraj and Monique and Frazier. What a game, the gold medal match. USA takes the victory, not without a fight though. Belgium, amazing play from them. Beaters, chasers, all around. I'm not gonna talk anymore. You guys clearly have a lot to say. 
How do you want to start this off? Beater game? Well, well, first of all, I have to say that if anyone had been taking bets on this match, few people would have called a swim game. Belgium absolutely smashed it out of the park to make that such a tightly run game. So impressed by that play. But the US kept their heads under intense pressure, managed to sneak out the win. Yeah, like a lot of people were saying before the game that the final uh, would have been in the quarterfinals between the US and Australia, which was also a fantastic game earlier. But Belgium really stepped up. Um, the beats game was phenomenal to watch. Uh, Max Ham and Lulu Zhu dominating early on, uh, getting USA those early goals, forcing Belgium to go 30 down and call their timeout. Uh, then Louis Lemit, uh, he just found another gear, um, almost single-handedly taking on Havlin, and then Jackson Johnson when he came on uh, in that first stint. I feel like uh, after that, Jackson jo Johnson, when he came back on, he then took control of the game, and that's when the US started pulling out of range. Uh, it's phenomenal to see Tim Van Hoogenvoort as well, and um, Tuai Abuinato beating together were fantastic, uh, keeping blood control for a long period uh, in the middle of that game. So it's phenomenal to watch. Monique? Yeah, I don't know what Team Belgium have been eating for breakfast, <laughs> the beaters. Maybe it's Vong O's or something like that. But they have improved out of hand. Lemit was amazing. He went off and I was thinking, maybe this is going to be a me momentum shift. Number, uh, number two comes on. An amazing foot catch he makes from a Team USA beater. Manages to maintain control. Really, there was no drop-off on either team in terms of the beating. It was really, they all played out of their minds. It was amazing. Yeah, I was going to mention that because for many people, especially if you're not too familiar with the Belgian team or the Belgian squad, obviously you have Louis Lemet, King Louis as they call him. And people say there's maybe a talent drop. As soon as he's fantastic on the pitch, dominates, subs off, maybe there's a bit of a dip. I didn't notice that here. Absolutely so would you say not. that's a, a good, um, strong leadership from the Belgian side? Oh, yeah. And what's so nice to see is an amazing player developing other amazing players. Sometimes you can see big egos in Quidditch where it's kind of like I'm the, the big guy on campus and I'm not going to share that with others. But clearly Lemit is not that way and has been training people up. And both partners as well. So number five played really well. Um, and unfortunately, I missed the other, who the other beta partner was. But, you know, really nice coordination between the beta pairs. Crazy. Oh yeah, definitely. Like uh, the way Belgium played that final is really testament to how far they've come in like a very short space of time. I must say, um, the majority of that team is comprised of the Antwerp Quidditch Club A side, who narrowly lost out to Paris Titans, uh, majorly most of the French players in the recent EQC final uh, back in April, um, and they beat the French twice today, and they've gone toe to toe with the US like in snitch range. It's in incredible development. But props to the US, they were, they were phenomenal. Hats off to both teams. Belgium never being on a uh, podium here at World Cup before. First time silver medal, that must feel fantastic. We focused a lot on the beater play. Tell me a bit uh, how you felt about the chasers. I felt that the chasers were surprisingly matched. So early on in the game, US dominated and nearly pulled, they were pulled into overtime range, certainly. Then after that timeout, there was a complete momentum shift. Belgium managed to retain bludger control, and wh whereas they weren't able to capitalize on no bludgers opportunities before, I don't know what was said in that huddle, but they absolutely were able to score against one bludger multiple times. Great finishes, amazing passes and pitch awareness, and really pulled themselves back into a game where they could have put their heads down and the US could have run away with it. Crazy. Yeah, I must say, uh, the Chaser game was also fantastic. I mean, this is the World Cup final after all. Um, but yeah, at um, start of the game, obviously US dominance uh, in the beta play transferred into off play. They played quite a high line and forced Belgium into a lot of mistakes, um, really applying that high pressure up pitch. And Belgium just did, couldn't really find the openings. Uh, and they knew how dangerous the US counter attack could be. They're, they're so, all of them so, so fast. So you really can't leave yourself open to that. Uh, but on, the Belgian, on the Belgian side, uh, Nathan Wilputter. Number 69, the keeper, had a fantastic game. It's a really good sh uh, mid-range short uh, shots on the drive. Uh, just fantastic. I think he got three or four goals in that match. And uh, really just found, found another gear. Uh, Stepper De Witt, like a, not so much an offensive threat today, but defensively, sc absolutely scrappy as ever. And uh, really making those shutouts count when the Belgians could on the US side. 
was really impressed with Simone Renz when he came on with his keeper shift. Uh, it's not his natural uh, position for Simone. He's normally um, normally a chaser and sort of renowned for his defense. Uh, but his his, his, his it the timing of his drivings was was excellent, and the distribution around hoops was phenomenal. And I must say, got to really give it to the U.S. Their their hoop defense was fantastic. So there's so many times where th throughout this tournament, really, teams have got so close to scoring against them. They've had the agility around the hoops to make those last ditch blocks, and that's that's the that's the real reason why they won. Defense wins championships, and defense won it for the U.S. here. Yeah, um, I think that's right. And something I that um, so um, I talked about the first momentum shift when Belgium called their timeout. The U.S. made a very smart decision and called their timeout when Belgium were really coming back, and uh, you know all of the momentum were with them. The whole stadium chanting "Let's go Belgium," you know, probably could have been hard for them, but they managed to really reset. Interestingly, switched to a male beta pair, double male beta pair, uh, which again looking for a bit more physicality, I guess, in that um, in that element of the game. But yeah, another crucial momentum shift after their timeout. So really interesting to see the the mentality behind that. Yeah, playing with a full stadium of fans cheering for the other team must get to your head. Um, I mean, I feel like there's often that case in uh, Quidditch finals because the U.S. is known as this big powerhouse. It's this dominant force, but it's kind of isolated and it's off by itself. So the players are all familiar with Belgium. As a European nation, you kind of want to see them win. Everyone likes to see an underdog matchup. So how do you think that would have played uh, affected the, the team mentally? So the, the USA have come in. The USA have come in. They're the redeemed team. All the pressure was on them. They were looking to regain the crown that they so surprisingly lost two years ago. Something that I'd really like to see is maybe for there to be a little less bias against the US in future. Um, you know, I think two years ago, people felt there was some arrogance on their side and, you know, people very happy to see Australia take the underdog win. But I really feel US have come in trying to be a lot more friendly, like really saying we're all a Quidditch family. So I really hope there'll be a little bit more support from them, from Europeans in future, because they've They've really shown their hearts to us. They've kept playing when they're down. I've been really, really impressed by them. Crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um, there's always pressure playing for Team USA because obviously it's where our sport's founded um, and they've been playing it much longer than any other nation. Uh, and I think like the Redeemed Team Tag, obviously, is sort of really hype up the team this year. <laughs> but it also is probably quite a big burden on those players, yeah. even more so than just playing for the USA. Um, kind of took the pressure off Champions Australia, I feel. Um, made it a bit easier for them, but they lived up to it, and they're they're big big game players. Even in this final here, very similar to two years ago, with lots of Australian fans cheering for Australia, big partisan crowd against them. Um, but they they've been like their experience uh, really really shone through, and uh, yeah, even in the face of all these Belgian supporters, uh, they powered through, and yeah, I I do believe that. We should all sort of look towards towards the US uh, a bit more. Obviously, they play fantastic Quidditch, and yeah, of course, there's there's always going to be a bit of arrogance um, about certain players. So when you get to the top level, a lot of players are very confident in their own abilities and things. Uh, but we should we should appreciate really good Quidditch when it's played, and well, they are the world champions. They do play the best Quidditch, so. I like sometimes to see a lot more US love. The, sometimes it comes with a reason. There's lots of skill there. Well, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Any players that Sean, uh, that you haven't mentioned yet that you wanted to give a special shout out to? We've talked about Zoo and Haviland as beta pair, but I want to say to them again, <laughs> they were fantastic and subbed back on in a critical moment, both playing with such high intensity against the Belgian team, which really had nothing to lose, were really going for it and yeah, managed to do a really good job. Fraser, any... Uh yeah, um, I'd like to give sort of a mention to the Belgian female chasers, uh, like Florence Anslot, uh, Suzanne Fisher especially. Uh, Fisher, quite a new player to the game, uh, but she's, she's taken to the international stage with Ghent Gargoyles, now with Belgium. Uh, got a really nice finish in the final um, and then just really, really put in the effort on defence and... Uh, Made the U.S. work for it uh, in the round of hoops, and that's what you want to see. So, very impressed all around. 
Yeah, I'd second that. And same from the Team USA female chase as well. Really nice finishing. Again, such great hustle. Like, fantastic to see for the sport. Great positioning for all of the chaser play there as well. Amazing gameplay on both sides of the pitch. That's what you want to see in a gold medal match. That's what you want to see in a World Cup final. Thanks for joining me here uh, discussing this. I mean, I'm still I'm still getting over that match. <laughs> it was it was it was fantastic. Well, we've Could seen so many amazing matches today. Both the third fourth place playoff in this game have been. They should be world class, and they were world class. Yeah, they were. They should have been world class. They were world class. Does this give you? Uh, how do you feel about the future of the sport going through? Every time we see a tournament, every team kind of grows. So, what are you looking forward to in the next World Cup? So I feel really positive about European Quidditch. I think when everyone saw how most of the non-European side fell on one side of the bracket, mm -hmm. it was felt like it might be a bit one-sided. That has not been the case. We've seen major upsets, drama, and I feel like, um, yeah, European Quidditch is looking very strong at the moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel, um, yeah, this World Cup has been a really positive tournament uh, for the sport. See lots of really close matches, not not too many blowouts, I don't believe. Um, especially not on day two. Uh, it's obviously the business end <laughs> of the tournament. Uh, and it's nice to see so many countries sort of being being on a level pegging. You could it all depended on the draw obviously, but you could sort of you could you could find several different countries who could be in snitch range each other. And uh, yeah, it just shows how much every country well, a lot of countries have developed in the past few years. Places like Germany, obviously Belgium in the final. Uh, really impressive. Uh, and also, just in terms of the size of the tournament, we've gone from 21 teams at the last World Cup to 29 this time around. Big expansion into Asia, uh, especially. And uh, yeah, a few more European teams as well. So really, really impressed with that. And hopefully, it'll be a this has been a fantastic advert for the sport. And... If other countries see this, we can hopefully spread the word of Quidditch to more places and have more teams next time around. Monique? Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Fraser. Um, a lot of teams here debutants, and a lot of people were really unsure how they'd be performing, especially a lot of the teams from the Asia-Pacific region. And we've seen, uh, we've seen uh, Malaysia uh, lose a to closely contested lower bracket uh, final game, fantastic from them. Good result from Vietnam, making the upper bracket. So we've seen some teams come in from regions previously up underrepresented and made a, s made a strong account of themselves. So I hope we're going to see more growth in those regions. Great. I mean, this has been a fantastic World Cup. Uh, the, the finals aside, any highlight matches, highlight moments? Um, there's, there, there's been a few. Uh, I've been Personally, I've been playing with Hong Kong, and that's been really special for myself. Uh, our win against Finland is a real memory that will stay with me forever. Uh, it's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, so many really good moments, actually. It's, it's hard to choose, but I think that one will stick with me as a personal note. Oh yeah, I would say some of the upset games have been fantastic. So Turkey's win that they pulled off against Canada this oh, morning. Oh, you had to bring that one up. <laughs> <laughs> so <deep>. oh. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, we've seen a lot of very tightly contested swim victories against sort of old school powerhouses mm -hmm. in world Quidditch. So yeah, it's just been so exciting to see all of the teams come and want it so much and really leave it all out there on the pitch. What what I really will say is like every year we 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 have this World Cup, the level of athleticism, like the tactical genius, just builds and builds and builds, and it's not just in like the elite countries; it's trickling down to all the other nations as well, and it's really positive for sport. It's getting us more sort of respected, I feel, and hopefully people will see this and go, "Wow, this is this is incredible," and they want to join and make the sport even better. And uh, one day, who knows, Olympics, professional professional Quidditch, that would be the dream. Uh, who knows, it's great to see a truly global sport. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for joining me here, Fraser, Monique. We just witnessed the finals of the IQ World Cup. We're wrapping up here. Gold goes to Team USA, silver to Brussels, not Brussels, to Belgium. Antwerp probably more likely, they have more team <laughs> players on the team there. So. Uh, Gold for the Americans, silver for the Belgians, and bronze 
for Team Turkey. That's two new teams on the podium this year. That's so exciting for the sport. It's so exciting as a tournament. I mean, every single game has been quality, as we saw on day two, as you guys have mentioned. It's been fantastic having you guys here with us on the live stream. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Siraj Singh, and this has been the IQA World Cup in Florence.